Well, hey folks, welcome back to another episode of the Brand Builder Show and Amazon sellers, this episode is for you today uh, because Prime Day is coming. No matter when you're listening to this podcast episode, whether it's when it's launched or whether it's in months or years to come, Prime Day is always really around the corner and so we're going to be talking about short-term strategies in this episode to help you if Prime Day is next week when you're listening to this and also some long-term stuff that you can get ahead of the game to get prepared. So it's going to be a really insightful episode, and I'm honoured to have Jake from Jungle Scout on the show today. Jake, welcome to the show. Ben, thank you so much. I'm a huge fan of the show, and I'm super stoked to be here. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's been been great. We've been connected for a while and touching base with each other, and so it's good to finally have you on the show. And I'm excited for uh, all of the knowledge you're going to bring. You're like the uh, you know the wise face of Jungle Scout. You're in so many of the yeah. tutorials <laughs> and so many of the YouTube videos. So you're a guy who's you know been around the block, knows his stuff. So I'm I'm glad to have you on to talk through what is obviously a massive, massive topic for Amazon sellers. Um, yeah. Before we get into that, just do tell us a little bit about yourself, so um, you know the two percent of people that have never heard of you can uh, can kind of get to know you a little bit more, your background, uh, how you came to be with Jungle Scout, and um, yeah, what you're up to now. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Ben. That, and that was too nice of an intro. I I think there's probably way more than two percent of people who don't know me. Um, <laughs> but for those who don't, I my name is Jake Zeratsi, and I work at Jungle Scout as a video content creator. I'm in a lot of YouTube videos, as Ben mentioned, and um, as a seller myself, I just started about a year ago with my own brand. Um, however, I have been consulting for the past, I think, four or five or six years now. I kind of lost track, um, but I've been consulting for a while, but haven't started my own brand until I joined Jungle Scout. And I think that really speaks to Jungle Scout's culture. They encouraged me to start selling on Amazon, um, and by selling myself, I'm, I've learned so much, and I'm excited to share that knowledge with other sellers, um, both for my consulting and experience selling myself. So that's a little background. Um, I did come from an agency before. I have um, advertising consulting experience there. So that was sort of my specialty before I became a sort of all around Amazon seller through experience. Awesome. awesome. Exciting. Well, we are at the time of recording in the run up to the first Prime Day. I was going to say Prime yeah. Day, but there are now two, uh, which we'll get into later in the episode. Um, but we're, we're right in the thick of the run up to Prime Day. Yes. Um, and so it's exciting time. You guys must be kind of busy at Jungle Scout. It's a big time of the year for, Certainly. for Amazon sellers. Um, and so I wanted to try and sort of break this down a little bit into obviously a little bit of an intro to what Prime Day is and why it's such a big opportunity mm. for you know, maybe newer Amazon sellers or Amazon sellers who haven't maybe given it the focus it deserves serves then look a little bit of short term like if people are listening to this episode when it's released or in the run up to another prime day mm -hmm. or even another big event like Q4 or that kind of thing what are the things they can do to get ready to maximize the opportunity uh, and then towards the end of the episode just talk more about you know future prep if someone's listening to this and the next one uh, prime day is not for a few months or even six months what can they be doing now in order to set themselves up because there are of course things that do take a bit more time in this business so um, let, let's start with Prime Day, a bit of an intro to it. Mm. What is you know, Prime Day and, and why is it such a big opportunity for Amazon sellers? Yeah, Prime Day is like Christmas, except it's mm. coming early for sellers. <laughs> Essentially, it's a huge way, a huge day where a lot of shoppers on Amazon are excited to shop because they know they're going to get awesome deals. It's essentially Black Friday. Last year, it was July 12th and 13th, and today it's 11th and 12th. So it's just a one day um, difference from last year. So it's awesome that Amazon's doing this each year around the same time. So people are getting more ingrained to, um, you know, this is the time to shop midsummer, essentially. Um, the first Prime Day was 2015. And so it's been going on for about like eight years now. Um, however, recently, Amazon, as of last year, introduced a fall Prime Day as well. So mm. this is Awesome. We have this Prime Day coming up, and even if you listen to this episode later, you can still use a lot of this knowledge or insights from today's episodes um, really all throughout the year. I think we're, what we're probably going to discuss, Ben, is our general best practices throughout the year, but it's heightened because of Prime Day. Um, however, there is another Prime Day coming up in the fall, um, unannounced right now, but maybe if it's similar to last year, I think it's, uh, I want to say October, November, sometime I think before. I've read it's October, yeah. October, great, before Black Friday. So yeah. um, that's a little background of Prime Day. Um, yeah. But yeah, Ben, what specifically should we jump into first? Any specific strategies um, that you have or any questions? 
Yeah, I, th- I think definitely the, the short term side of it, because, yes. um, you know, when this is released, it's, it's coming up and uh, in a couple of weeks time or a week's time even. Um, and just to really ha- get people ready and prepared for how to make the most of the event itself. So, you know, mm-hmm. uh, listings, all that kind of stuff to be able to yeah, really maximize the opportunity that comes with Prime Day. Um, yeah. What are those real big needle movers that are going to be there for Amazon sellers? I think the biggest needle mover um, before inventory, I think inventory is something that you need to have there. It's a prerequisite to everything that we'll probably talk about here um, is the lead up before Prime Day becoming very aggressive. So when you define your goals for Prime Day, which is very important, whether you're going to go profit or you're going to go growth, which most people do a growth uh, driven Prime Day goal. And that's when you're just going to accelerate sales, accelerate sales velocity, and trying to increase increase your rankings, your customers, uh, all that fun stuff. That's what most people do. However, maybe your goal is to use Prime Day to become more profitable. Perhaps you've spent the beginning part of the year doing a growth-driven goal, and you need Prime Day to sort of win back your profit margin for the year. So defining your goals is so important. Once you have those goals, which could be at the product level, if you have tons of products, or if you have a few products that could just be at the brand level. But once you understand your goals for this Prime Day, I think the biggest thing you can do is attack it early. A lot of sellers will sort of wait until Prime Day, so those two days on the July 11th and 12th this year, to run their deals, to increase their bids, to increase their budgets, and just do a lot of things to collect essentially data. Um, But what I like to do is do that a little bit early. And the reason why is Amazon has awesome campaigns, sponsored display campaigns that you can retarget customers. Mm -hmm. And even if your ACoS and your conversion rate is low now, which it probably will be, consumers, whenever they log into Amazon app, they get hit with that banner ad that tells them when Prime Day is, essentially just another way of saying, hey, don't buy something yet, but start researching. Yeah. But what I'd like to do is get in front of those shoppers now, get them to at least acknowledge me whether they're clicking into my listing so I can retarget them or ideally they're actually harding my product and adding it to their shopping list. What that does is on Prime Day, they're essentially going to be alerted and easily be able to access your Prime Day deal rather than researching your product. They can just go through their shopping list and find it again. Yeah. What's even awesome, Ben, I, I will probably talk about this more later, so I won't, I guess, go too deep is what you can do after Prime Day is, again, retarget these customers or shoppers. And then again, if anything is in their shopping cart on mobile, most customers have this enabled where they get these mobile alerts whenever there's a Prime Day deal, whenever there's a limited time deal. So think of lightning deals Mm -hmm. or sometimes even coupons or standard price reductions. So what I like to do, Ben, is just go really aggressive in the weeks leading up to Prime Day just to collect that data and to get those customers touching my product in any way that way i can either retarget them or hit them on prime day or after prime day yeah that's a good thought because i always get the um, notifications on my app about you uh, added this power bank to your wish list it's got a deal now and and that kind of thing so yeah i I would tend to think because of those higher uh, or lower conversion rates the higher ad costs in the run-up to prime day often i'm tempted to kind of scale back a little bit before prime day but what you're saying there is actually that traffic that you're generating before can help you with conversions on the day absolutely and afterwards like worst case you know, customers maybe have a hundred products in their wish in their wish list. They're not going to be able to buy them all. So maybe down the line, you're going to be able to get them later with a deal that you have because they're getting that mobile notification. It's all about sort of just getting them in the system now so that you can retarget them later. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So with advertising, then, would you say the best strategy really is to leave things as they are for your long term campaigns uh, in the run up to uh, Prime Day, or should the uh, sellers be doing anything special? What I like to do differently with Prime Day is sort of what I should be doing all throughout the year. And I use Prime Day as a reminder for that. And that's to segment my campaigns by the keywords I want to bid on for Prime Day. Okay. The reason why I think that's really important is if you have a campaign with, let's say, even like 10 or 20 keywords, so a low amount of keywords on Prime Day, those are most likely going to to be out of budget. Like your budget, campaign budget will be exhausted maybe midday. And if you spend the majority of that on keywords that are less profitable, maybe keywords that um, you know you have a lower ranking on, or you just didn't want to spend on, but they are good keywords to keep in mind and to bid on throughout the year, but they're not your most prioritizing prioritized keywords that you want to spend your, your budget on. So what I like to do is separate those keywords, the keywords that are in striking range. And what I mean by that is keywords that are close to the top five or, or one position. Um, yeah. You can use tools like General Scout to analyze that, the organic rankings, 
or what you can do, or really additionally what you should do is segment it by the type of keyword. Um, maybe an example is best for this, Ben, is our product that we sell on Amazon uh, at Jungle Scout. It's a washable pee pad for dog. It's one of the few products we sell. And the key term there is washable because we are competing against other products that are reusable. And so in our campaigns right now, um, we have them segmented by the, the type of keywords. So we have all of our washable keywords in one list. We have all of our um, um, crate pads in another list, so a bunch of other use cases. And those are separated so that we know, okay, waterproof or washable is a lot better than our crate or our um, training mat. And it's nice to have those separated now because on Prime Day, again, a lot of keywords are going to spend very quickly. And if you just have everything in one campaign, then you're not able to to pull as many levers to change where you're spending as fast as you need to. So yeah. segmenting your keywords in a nutshell is what I would do right now so that on Prime yeah. Day, you have ultimate control. Yeah, no, lots of great points. And definitely something I always try and do is in the run up to Prime Day, target those keywords that are top of page two, bottom of page one, see if you can get them a, a bit of a boost. Because even if you drive PPC spend on them now, that's, you know, break even or a slight, you know, cost on them now, you can make that up in massive ways on Prime Day if you can get to top of page one, for example. Absolutely. What, what are your favorite advertising tips, Ben? Do you do anything different with your budgets? Or, or bids in particular? I, my um, recent last couple of Prime Days, what I've tended to do is just increase the budgets, but leave mm -hmm. the bids as they are. Because uh, what Amazon will tell you to do is increase your bids uh, to crazy right. levels. And then because people are so click happy throughout Prime Day, it costs a fortune. And mm. so I, I think obviously what it comes down to, and you made a great point on growth versus profitability. If all that matters is growth and you just want to blast products out there, Prime Day is a great opportunity to that. To do that if you are willing to increase your bids, but it may become very expensive for you. So um, I try to earn more on the side of profitability um, uh, because otherwise it can just do havoc with your inventory planning, which we'll talk about. Um, so I tried to take a nice little bit of a boost, you know, maybe a 2x or 3x in sales, but you know, still with some profitability in there, try and try and grab the best of both worlds, if that makes sense. Absolutely. I think that's a great approach. You can always adjust your bids throughout the day. If you're logging in yeah. midday and yeah. you're not getting the spend or impressions you want, then you can adjust there. I, th I think that's a great strategy. And it's actually what I like to do is start low and eventually scale up as yeah, yeah. I'm either getting or not getting impressions there. Yeah, because it's pretty real time, the updates, isn't it, to, to your bidding. So you can adjust yes. as you go. Um, Absolutely. Good, good. Okay, so yeah, in terms of advertising then on uh, the event, we've talked about the, the run-up, keep going through. Uh, I've mentioned their bids uh, adjustment, budget adjustment. Are there any other things? You, know, you mentioned sponsored display before. Is that something mm -hmm. the average Amazon seller should be doing over Prime Day or is that more of something to do after Prime Day? I think it's something you really should be testing all throughout the year, but on Prime Day would be, if you haven't done it already, the specific campaign, um, the retargeting campaigns, then I would try it on Prime Day, but just because you, it's a great time to test that campaign. Yeah. Just keep in mind that the data is going to be way different than the data you'll get throughout the year on a non-Prime uh, Day event. Yeah. But I think, yes, starting with your first campaign on Prime Day, specifically the sponsor display retargeting campaign, um, is a really great idea to just test it out and see if you're able to um, capture sales from people who looked at your product a few months ago even, um, and are now getting reminded about your deal on Prime Day. So yeah. that's one of my favorite campaigns to run on any type of day, like Christmas or, or, or I guess leading up to Christmas, Q4, um, mm -hmm. are these retargeting campaigns. Yeah. And what about seasonally targeted keywords? Christmas, obviously, an example, Christmas gifts, etc. But uh, maybe more specifically for Prime Day, you know, Prime Day discounts, Prime Day deals, some sellers think, well, I'll throw those keywords into my campaigns, um, mm. which are obviously not relevant to any product at all. D do they convert? Are they worth putting in? What are your thoughts there? You know what? I haven't actually done that, to be honest with you. I do okay. think I've seen in my automatic campaign search term reports that pop up a little bit, yeah. but I haven't taking the initiative to bid on them in Amazon keyword targeting campaigns. Yeah. However, a good strategy with that, Ben, is to actually do that on Google. A lot of shoppers are going to Google first to find their Prime Day deals, and mm -hmm. they're just trained that way to use Google as a way to either jump onto Amazon or jump on another direct-to-consumer website. Um, so if you're going to, do, to bid on Prime Day-related keywords, I do think Google is a great way of doing that. And if you're using Amazon attribution, um, you will save a little bit on that sale. So mm -hmm. Just a quick, quick um, 
you know, intro to that, it's essentially by using an Amazon attribution link, you'll save on the referral fee um, up to 10% of the referral fee um, just by bringing traffic to Amazon. So that I think is a great way of using those prime day related keywords is with Google campaigns. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I've never done targeted, you know, specifically Amazon uh, or sorry, prime day deals, prime day discounts. Cause I just think obviously it's going to be such um, broad traffic and so irrelevant to your products but uh, I suppose mm. the middle ground may well be testing it with your products you know if you're selling a yoga mat yoga mat prime day deal yoga mat prime day discount you know including it with in more of like a phrase form or broad match with keywords that are related to your products might be worth trying but yeah I've, I've never been brave enough to test it because I just feel like that, that budget's going to get ran through so easily <laughs> agree I one more one more thing Ben too on the topic of advertising on the topic of advertising is a lot of people who actually don't run prime day deals. So what I would highly suggest doing is running product targeting campaigns to products specifically, or just your category, um, because Amazon's going to do a good job of knowing who doesn't have prime day deal and who's more likely to click on a product that does have a prime day deal. So once customers land on a product, they scroll down and they see that carousel of similar products. That's a great pl spot to be if the product above and next to you don't have prime day deals. So I love running product targeting campaigns. I think video campaign, uh, at least for our business, is the most profitable. However, the other campaigns when you're using keywords get the most spend out of it. So um, whether you're targeting your products, your competitors' products or categories, I think that's another great, I guess, tactic to run on prime day. Yeah, that's a great tip and a great segue into uh, promotions and what sellers should be doing there. Obviously, there are a few options, um, and I suppose we could bundle this in with pricing as well. You know, what's the strategy here? Uh, because I always feel that wrestle between I want to do a nice, juicy discount, I want to do a great promotion because it's going to generate sales, but what Amazon wants obviously is cheap, cheap prices. And do I want to go there or do I want to, you know, try and stand my ground? Uh, so, what do you feel is the best approach to pricing and then we can come into promotions what are the options there in terms of uh, you know vouchers prime day deals etc yeah i think to our point that we mentioned earlier ben is depending on your goals there if yeah. you're a growth driven uh, mindset which is i think the majority of this question here um you definitely want to do a prime day deal but if you didn't set that up in time maybe you just didn't have inventory or um you just forgot i think it was like mid-april uh, or late April that you had to submit these deals. So it was quite a long time ago. If you didn't do that, that's completely fine. It's, it, it'd be ideal to. However, I think coupons are another great way to draw in attention. Um, people will actually go to the coupon landing page on Amazon. So there's like a its own dedicated page to products that have a coupon and they'll sort of use that for their prime day shopping. Um, so that's a great way if you didn't have a prime day deal is to have a coupon. But if you don't want to do a coupon, maybe it's just going to be too steep for you. You can lower your price. So let's say your price is you know $20 and it's been that way for 90 days and you've at least had a few sales on it. If you lower your price manually, Amazon does this strike through and shows the customer what they're saving. And they're essentially just using if you sold at a higher price in the past 90 days as like your list price. Um, and so you can actually have a list price and a regular price or you can just reduce your price and Amazon will display it like a deal. I guess the downside is you don't get a nice little fancy label there that helps you with your yeah, yeah. click-through rate in the search results. Out, yeah. It doesn't stand out. But once shoppers get to your page, they'll see that deal. And it looks so similar to a lightning, um, a lightning deal mm -hmm. that I think it helps with conversion, especially on Prime Day. So, yeah. again, if you're not using a Prime Day deal, which is completely fine if you forgot or just couldn't at the time, a coupon or a manual price reduction is great. And then keep in mind too, if you're running off Amazon traffic like Google ads or you have social media promotions and you know that's gonna help you drive sales without having a yeah. direct promotion embedded into Amazon. Yeah. Um, so those are some options to lower your price outside of a Prime Day deal. Yeah, yeah, the coupons I've always found to be very effective because you get that you know, special Prime Day discount sort of um, flash sticker on in search results, which definitely does help with click-through rate. The downside, obviously, is you do have to do a minimum of 20% discount on the right. lowest price, I think, in the last 30 days or 60 days. So if you've, um, especially for newly launched products, if you've had it at a low price and then been raising it, then you have to go crazy low for one of those. But we've always found them to convert really well. So definitely, you know, worthwhile looking at. Um, 
in, in terms of Prime Day deals, what's the best sort of strategy? Again, it, it's too late now for, say, July 1 when we release this, but people can start getting ready for October Prime Day with those Absolutely. deals and start preparing inventory, et cetera. What's the, the kind of the, the strategy there? Is it to mm. go? Um, because I, I don't run too many deals, honestly. I, I just do the coupons because, um, you know, trying to manage that inventory kind of craziness is too much for my stress level. So I just tend to do the, the coupons. <laughs> But with Prime Day deals, that's from what I've read in, um, you know, from other people doing it. A few years ago, it could go absolutely bonkers, but now it's not quite as crazy. Is that kind of right from your experience? Yeah. And maybe this is a great way to answer it. Last year for my product, and keep in mind, I just launched the product. It was about four months old, I want to say at the time. I tested this out. I shouldn't have done it. I should have just gone full Prime Day deal two days and just gone for it. But what I did was I had a prime day deal on the first day and my typical daily sales at that time was anywhere from like 10 to 20. So it was doing pretty good. And then on prime day, I sold like 150 to 200 on just the first day. And that was through a prime day deal. The second day, I only had the prime day deal go, I only had so much inventory left. So the prime day deal um, stopped itself. And I just had a regular price reduction on my on on my page, so it looked like a Prime Day deal. Kind of just didn't have the badge. It was a lot cheaper than the Prime Day deal. I think my Prime Day deal was like thirty or forty percent off, and the price reduction was like five. And I got about fifty to seventy sales. I can't remember the exact amount, but it was significantly more than my average daily sales at the time. Just way less than the the Prime Day deal. There's two variables there. Obviously, there's like the the first day and second day. Everyone's excited about the first day, and then there's the actual dollar off in the badge or the percentage off, I should say, um, and then the Prime Day badge or lack of Prime Day badge. So I think you don't need to have a deal if my story is you know accurate to other products. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but certainly, if you do, in my experience, it's going to in your in your case or for, in your words, explode, um, or at least you could expect it to explode. And keep in mind, I had a lot of ads running at the time too. Um, yeah. So I was really losing. I did lose a lot on Prime Day the first day, but it did help me actually on the second day to not have that Prime Day deal going. And I really stopped my ads. I think I had one automatic campaign going and I made up a lot of what I lost the day before. So um, both options are good, whether you do have a deal or not. Um, I think just one over the other though, the Prime Day discount will significantly increase your sales if you're going Mm. for that growth driven goal. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, I've just noticed from what a lot of people said is it can be come quite unpredictable now because there's mm-hmm. so much volume for prime day there's so many sellers doing deals you know y- your deal could get lost in the you know um, Good point. all of the deals going on or it could get picked up and go crazy and it's very hard to plan inventory based on those kind of uh, variables so i think they are definitely like you say a good option if you are in growth mode mm-hmm. and got lots of inventory that you could um, sell but if you are worried about selling through inventory or, or you know running out of stock then um then maybe it's better to allocate your budget in other places. Could be a summary, I suppose. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, then final thing on sort of short term prep uh, on Amazon specifically, L- listings. Aside from the usual listing optimization, you know, images, copy, etc., are there any other things sellers should be doing? Should we try and put Prime Day in our backend uh, search terms? Or, you know, is there anything like that? Any little hacks that we should be doing, or is it just the usual listing optimization principles? I do think it's the usual li- listing optimization principles. However, what I would do even if you just have a week to lead up to it, start testing things. And the two most impactful tests would be, or maybe a lot of three here, one, your advertising, um, which keywords are, are going to work and which targeting tactics you want to use. So create new campaigns that you haven't already. Um, again, maybe a sponsored display campaign or two. Um, but the two most impactful, I think, are your title and main image. So start testing that now. Maybe you have another yeah. angle of your product that includes your packaging or, or something else that you can just start testing now, whether it's through Amazon's manager exper- experiments or just yourself by manually subbing out the photos. I think your main image will probably be the most impactful, but marrying that with your title is a great way to, um, to A-B test. So um, a good example of this is if you have a waterproof product, um, moving up that waterproof keyword to the beginning and then making sure your main image shows that your, wa- your product is waterproof. Yeah. So marrying those two together, I think, is a great way to test before Prime Day. And then you can implement the winner on Prime Day. Um, however, again, like these are things that you can do all throughout the year, but the most impactful yeah. listing tip would be to test. The second 
in my opinion, is to, um, so you mentioned, Ben, like your backend keywords, is mm. really clean up and see um, what you can do to fill in more information on the back end, whether it be search terms, whether it be just product information. Mm. Funny enough, Amazon is now implementing later in this month, mid-month, uh, new sellers, when they um, add a new product, they need to fill out a lot more information than when you first had to do like a couple months ago, a couple years ago. And Amazon's mm -hmm. just essentially saying, hey, give us more information about your product. We want to be able to show it in search results better. Uh, we need to know your product much better. So right now, what you could do is you can go back and fill in a lot of these details that you know new sellers have to fill in, but you didn't have to at the time. And that's going to help Amazon index and, and rank you a lot better. Um, and it's just a little thing you can do before Prime Day is just clean up your back end. Yeah, that's a good tip, really good tip. I always say to our community, you know, the next big event is always coming, you know, Christmas is coming, Q4 is coming, Prime Day is coming, and you make a great point there about continually testing. You know, a week mm. before Prime Day, uh, when this episode will be released, is, is probably not the time to, yes, as you said, you can do little bits, but what you really wanna be doing with uh, thoughts like that is thinking, you know, October Prime Day is coming, uh, so how can I test something every week, every two weeks, so that by the time these big high volume traffic events come around, my listing is as optimized as possible um, based on the data, the testing, you know? So I think, yeah, you, that's a really good tip about continually be testing so that when these events come around, you can make the most of them. Um, when the event actually does come, uh, what should sellers expect? If this is their first prime day, what is the, the two days like? Is it crazy amount of traffic? Do they need to be at, glued to their computer the whole, uh, you know, event period? What, what's it like for a seller? Yeah, this is a tough one because it goes against everything that I typically say about waiting multiple days or weeks even until you, you learn from your um, your data, essentially. I, I think it's always great to not make knee-jerk reactions, but Prime Day is a hard day um, to not be hypocritical. So I, I do it myself. I, I, I'm in there midday usually. I give it the morning to see what's spending. Typically, I'm just looking at the keywords that are, are getting the most impressions or spend behind them. Um, I'm not so worried about the cost per click that as much unless I'm trying to correct something. So what I tend to do on my prime days are just look at my, my main keywords first, my main campaigns and say, okay, am I spending on these keywords enough? And if the answer is yes, then great. Maybe I actually lower it down a little bit. If no, then this is where I'm going to be spending most of my time and maybe popping in every like two or three hours to just see if it's made a difference um, and keep adjusting upwards if not. So I'm mostly just looking at spend and impressions because again, last thing I want to do is see that the majority of my spend are going to keywords or even campaigns that are less priority than my top ones. Um, if that's the case, then you know something you learn from like the first day could be applied to the second day. Maybe you stop campaign, certain campaigns altogether. So you stop certain keywords altogether. You adjust maybe your bidding strategy from up and down to just down only or fixed even. Yeah. Um, but I typically learn halfway through day one, apply those learnings to day two, um, and then just hope that that actually worked or that adjustment's being made. So. Again, just like keyword spend. Am I getting the right keyword spend um, from the ones that I'm I'm really prioritizing this Prime Day? Yeah, good thoughts, good thoughts. And in terms of um, you're just protecting your listing as well. If you're in like a real high volume category, if you're a real prominent product, it can uh, attract maybe some bad behavior from other sellers. So that'd be a good time to have your Jungle Scout alerts turned on to make sure there's no issues with your listing there's no you know craziness going on in seller central just good to have those kind of things uh, covered as well one more thing too i use so it's called rank tracker i did mention it earlier indirectly but it's a jungle scout tool that helps you see your organic and sponsored rankings and you can do it for your competitors as well on any keyword what i like to do is um one of my little um, quirks that i do is almost every couple of hours i'll look at those on Prime Day. And you'll see there's like a right hand column of when Jungle Scout updates the data. It's typically daily for um, you know most keywords, but some keywords are, are so frequently used by other sellers or it's just a high volume keyword that it's updated multiple hours during the day. And so I like to see like, okay, am I not one, just like getting the most spend out of my keywords in my campaigns that I want, but is it actually going up towards the top five or, or top one, um, ideally on either sponsored or organic. Organic might not tick up as much, but the sponsored, I'm really curious to see, am I getting up there? Um, because the last thing you want to see is, okay, you're spending a lot of money, but like your sponsored ads aren't really showing up where you want to show up. So they're showing up maybe at the bottom of the page. Um, there's that whole like top of search versus product page placement, but there's no way to get your product um, not to show at the bottom of search results, um, which is a placement on Amazon. So 
Um, that's what I like to see is am I actually showing up at the top if I'm spending a lot of money? And that's a great way to do double check is using a tool like Rank Tracker just to verify your organic or sponsored search rankings. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's good, good. Okay, and then in terms of more long-term prep for say October mm. Prime Day, Q4 even, um, and then the just the next Prime Day that's coming, we've talked about the short-term stuff like getting your advertising ready, getting your pricing, promotions, your listings ready. What are the things with a longer view mm. that sellers need to be planning and preparing for? Yeah, well, I'll try not to repeat anything we already talked about just to give some actionable advice here. Um, and hopefully if you just learned one thing that's, will be impactful for you. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing with inventory, which is the number one thing that you should be thinking about throughout the year, and especially planning for the fall prime day, is understanding your average daily sales. And yeah. that might fluctuate. That might fluctuate throughout the year. Maybe you have a season, um, a peak season, or maybe it's just for some reason in, in July or August that your product upticks a little bit. So it's not technically a season, but it's just a, a, it's a, it's a trend, a yearly trend. And what I like to do is bake in my current daily sales versus um, what happens typically throughout the year. An example of that is if I'm you know, getting 10 sales a day right now, but last year it went, I went from five to 10. Well, okay, I just doubled there. So I can expect now to go from 10 to 20 this year. Yeah. And just knowing your average daily sales and what you can expect it to go either up or down is super powerful and allows you to easily like gauge how much you need to order um, on t to get on time on Amazon. And that's another really important point, Ben, is a lot of sellers understand, okay, I know how much I need to order, but they don't know when to order it. And you know they can look at things like their, their, their production lead time, their shipping lead time, but they're maybe missing the fact that Amazon, especially during peak seasons, like leading up to Prime Day, leading up to Fall Prime Day, and especially leading up to Christmas or Q4, um, the check-in times to your FBA warehouse will be a lot slower. So understand that and bake in a few extra days. There's tools like out there like Jungle Scout. There's a bunch of other tools as well that help you effectively plan your inventory by telling you, hey, this is how much you usually sell. This is how much you're gonna need to order because of that. And here's when you need to order it on this day. Um, so yeah, I use our Jungle Scout inventory manager for this, but if you're not using that tool, you can, you can do it manually if you have a few products um, just by running Excel uh, formulas. Um, but if you have a bunch of products, then I highly recommend just making that investment on an inventory management tool. That to me, Ben, is like the biggest um, long-term planning that you can do before Prime Day. Maybe another more actionable um, tip here though, is when you're getting that new order ready for Prime Day, think about what happens when someone opens it. Uh, and this isn't just like a general tip. I'm, I'm speaking about like product inserts. You're going to be selling a lot of inventory, hopefully. And what you do after that is sort of up to you. Like, is, do you have anything that customers can do after they buy your product or did you just make a bunch of sales and hopefully your keyword rankings went up on Amazon, um, which help you get more organic sales. So what I like to do is really not just hope that happens, but hope that they stay with me longer or come to my social media. Maybe they leave a review or anything else I want them to do. Maybe it's a subscribe and save um, just awareness. And a product insert is a great way of driving that. So leading up to a big event like Q4, Prime Day, um, or any other event, just try to do that extra little thing. Um, maybe it is a product insert. Maybe it's something on your packaging that you can tweak and make better or, or stand out with yeah. branding. Um, I think that's one of the best things that you can do longer term um, to have a yeah. post Prime Day effect. Yeah, yeah, this is such a uh, key thought as well, isn't it? That idea of a, a halo effect from Prime Day, because you don't want to just sell a load of product on Prime Day. You want that ongoing uh, sort of ripple from that to impact your organic ranking, to impact your reviews, to impact your email subscribers on your brand's email list. There's so much beyond Absolutely. just the sales over Prime Day that Prime Day can have an impact on over the coming months of your business. Absolutely. Maybe one quick little tip here, Ben, is um, what I like to do, and I really kick myself for not doing it every year, is setting up my campaign search term reports to download either automatically or manually after Prime Day. Because right now, if you're listening before Prime Day and you sold last year, you're probably really hoping you had that data from last year. And if you don't download it within 30 or no, sorry, 90 days, your Amazon search term reports are gone. And this is really, again, the importance of segmenting your campaign so you can easily yeah. analyze them post Prime Day or really post any event um, is to just download those. So after Prime Day, maybe give it a few days because there's a 14 day attribution window uh, for sales to trickle in. Um, give it about like 15 days maybe, and then just download that report. So that way next year, you can name it in your file, like Prime Day 2023, you can look back at that and then use that information um, 
to help you with the next prime day. So I think organizing your campaign so that you can easily analyze the search reports um, is another great thing that you can do right now to plan for the next prime day. Yeah, that's a really solid tip. I think just getting in the habit of doing it once a month, setting yourself a task in your task uh, tool of just downloading the search term report Definitely. every month, even if you don't look at it for six, 12 months, just to have the data there, I think is a really, really valuable exercise. So that's a, a reminder to me as well. I should be doing that. <laughs> so that's good, man. Um, but you mentioned post prime day, which I would just want to finish on in a yeah. sec, but just to come back on the inventory thing to round up on it, I want to ask you an impossible question, yeah. um, which is for a new seller that hasn't got the data from previous prime days how should they approach the potential bump they obviously don't want to order too much they don't want to run out of stock inventory management is not a cookie cutter solution there's no perfect answer i know but as a new seller yourself how did you go go into prime day last year just order as much inventory as you could afford or what, what was your mindset there to be honest with you ben i did i ordered as much inventory as i could possibly store in amazon and I utilized that full amount because I knew if for some reason I didn't sell through it and I had a lot of inventory that I needed to get out before you know, I started getting hit with long-term storage fees, then I knew I would continue to be aggressive post-Prime Day with Lightning Day deals or aggressive advertising to steamroll from the Prime Day success that my product um, was given in terms of like keyword rankings. Um, so yeah, I think if you can, order as much as you possibly can. If you don't have any data from last year, just to suggest how much you could sell. Um, how much you can possibly fit into Amazon FBA. However, just understand the risk of that. So I was fully aware that I could probably, you know, lose out on some long-term storage fees. And I was okay with that. I did just launch a new product and I wanted to just make sure that I could, you know, have my prime day deal go throughout the, the duration. And my whole goal at the time was I need reviews. I need to get to my first hundred reviews fast. And so that was my goal. And I ordered as much inventory as possible. But if you don't want to do that and you want to be a little more cautious, um, you can still use your, what we talked about earlier, Ben, your average daily sales velocity and give it a slight bump. Maybe it's a two to three bump yep. uh, times bump. Um, and that will give you a somewhat of an indicator of how much you should order. If you don't have enough space in Amazon to, to fill that, you can always use a 3PL or what a lot of sellers do, I don't. I don't do it personally just because I don't have the man hours. I have a full-time job and um, I got a lot going on outside of work. So I just don't have time to do this myself, but you could create an FBM offer. And if you have inventory sent to your house, you could package them and deliver it yourself. You just have to be ready. Maybe take off the day after Prime Day or something just to get those shipments out of the door. But it is another way to to have enough inventory in time is to create that FBA offer. Or maybe you are using a 3PL storage facility and you have them fulfill those orders, those overflow orders, but hopefully it's not too much. And the good thing about Prime Day as well is it is a couple of days. Obviously, Q4 is a bit harder yeah. because if you, especially if you have a product that it does do well in Q4, that's a, an extended period of time to pr uh, plan that extra inventory for. But Prime Day is a little bit easier because it is just a couple of days. But mm -hmm. still, that's good, helpful advice for getting prepped on that front. Um, yeah, to, to finish with then, just post Prime Day, what should sellers be doing to you know, make the most of that ripple, that halo effect we talked about, You know, not just being a... Um, you know a, a two-day event in a vacuum but actually impacting your business moving forward um, what are some other things they can do some other things you can do is if you're yeah already past the point where you can't include a product uh, insert in your packaging to ask for a review you can always still send a review request afterwards um, in amazon so within seller central you can manually go to each and every order and click request um, a review and that review has to come at least i think it's three to seven i think it's three days after they receive it at their doorstep, but it expires within the next 30 days. And so they have a short window of time to manually go in there and ask those customers, hopefully it's a lot of customers to leave a review. And to me, I think that's so impactful. Like you used Prime Day to get your sales um, or get your product out the door, and now you need to bring that review, hopefully, into your listing. You can do it mainly through Seller Central, but if you have tons of orders, what I would do is Jungle Scout's automated this whole process. We have a tool called Review Automation. It's why a lot of people actually sell or sign up for Jungle Scout. It's to just use this one feature. You log into Jungle Scout once you sign up, you toggle this button to the on position, and every time you you sell a product essentially, in that, that eligibility window, we'll send a review out for you. Um, it's not a custom review. It really, it's just like someone going into your account and pressing those review buttons for you. Um, so it's all just done through Amazon system. We're automating it. 
But getting reviews, whether you're doing it manually yourself or through a tool like Jungle Scout to automate it is great. You wanna make sure you're, to your point, just like using Prime Day to do more than just accelerate your sales. Um, I think what's really powerful though is to, we talked about this in the beginning, Ben, and it's great to recircle um, back to this, is post Prime Day, what do you wanna do? Do you want to recoup your money? Did you lose a lot of money um, having these deals and advertising campaigns on full blast? Or do you wanna capitalize off a lot of people doing that? So a lot of sellers will wanna recoup and they'll stop advertising or they'll raise their prices even. Um, but what you could do is your keyword rankings will be in a lot better position to do this is to continue it. So have a coupon, but maybe a lot lower than your Prime Day deal or slash your price from the list price or just a general sales price reduction um, or do anything you can. Maybe it's just through advertising. You keep your price the same or even increase your price, but you go ag aggressive on advertising. You could use Prime Day as a way to, I guess, steamroll into the next season or into the next pr um, in the next period of time, whether it's a peak season for you or not. So to me, it's just, it's it's how much you're willing to lose or how much there is to gain. If you just launched your product, then I think that is a great idea because you're just trying to get reviews right away. And yeah. your your product and your listing will be in a prime position, no pun intended, uh, because you'll be using Prime Day as a way to just get in front of other competitors who you wouldn't be in front of in any other time throughout the year, but because they're stopping and you're continuing going, um, you could hopefully get, you know, use Prime Day as an acceleration uh, to keep it going and get more reviews. So yeah. um, that's one thing I, I did that last year with my new product launch, if that's helpful. But um, yeah, immediately after I did have to slow down, I had to stop, pull everything off and order new inventory to avoid completely going out of stock. But that's one of my favorite ways to use Prime Day is the post Prime Day attack. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I, I think it really brings us back to that point you've made many times is it's about your goals mm -hmm. uh, and it can be frustrating maybe for some people to hear this and and think well you know just tell me what should I do should I do it this way or this way and, and the reality is that it does depend you know yes. it's, it's not a great answer a lot of people don't want to hear it but it does depend on your goals and the beauty of it is there are many a way many ways to approach it and you're right you know I haven't sort of even considered that thought that after Prime Day a lot of people are going to be trying to recoup that so there in itself lies another opportunity mm -hmm. to get market share and so if you can withstand the, the cheaper pricing there's lots of opportunities there as well so it really is uh, dependent on your goals for Prime Day but also your goals after that so I think yeah every Everything you've said really just brings us back to that key point is about understanding what your goals are ahead of time in order to be able to execute on the best strategy for your business. Um, not to put words in your mouth, but that's kind that's of great. the summary of you know, what you said. <laughs> Perfect. Um, any other sort of final tips or advice before we, uh, before we close Prime Day or otherwise kind of secret hacks that you've learned being at one of the leading Amazon tools in the world? You've got all that inside knowledge, man. Maybe, maybe a few actually. So <laughs> the, <laughs> a few like little quick tips. So maybe if like, yeah. you fast forwarded to this section, here's what you can take away. Some like quick tips outside of what we talked about already is Think about like your creative. So a really good um, tip here is not just your main image or your other secondary images on your listing, but think about your your sponsored brand, your sponsored display, uh, creative images. So essentially a custom ad image. These images convert so much better than just your brand's logo or some generic text. Um, so when advertising on Prime Day or really any time throughout the year, consider using a custom image. Maybe you're using AI to create that or you're using a professional photographer or some other image you have that's a lifestyle image. Um, using that instead of just a generic, what everybody else is doing on Amazon um, or what most people are doing on Amazon um, will increase your uh, click-through rate. And hopefully when you get people there, they'll see your price and then your conversion rate will go up. Um, ben, the, I think the way I like to dumb it down is just focus on if there's if it came out of three metrics on Amazon mm -hmm. outside of profitability, of course, I would say impressions, click through rate, and conversion rate. If you can just increase Absolutely. all three of those, then yep. I think it becomes very simple of what you need to do. Um, it's Absolutely. like a three step process. So, yep. yeah, one of the things is to get people to even think about buying, get them to click, and using a custom image, whether it's through your uh, sponsored brand, sponsored display campaign, would be a quick little tip I'd recommend here. Um, yeah. Anything else that I can recommend? I'm trying to think. There's a lot of tools out there, not just Jungle Scout, but if you do have Jungle Scout or you're considered, considering using Jungle Scout, you can use the previous year's Prime Day data, so keyword data specifically. It's actually what I'm doing 
right now and what I started doing when Amazon announced it is I'm going back to the keywords that saw the biggest increase on Prime Day last year. And General Scott's got two years of keyword data, so you can use a graph to see um, that sales increase, or I'm sorry, that um, essentially like that demand increase for those keywords, and then use those to prioritize which ones you want to bid on. So. I guess understanding what your keywords are that are working now, but maybe understanding what keywords grow the most and using that as a way to prioritize which ones to bid on within your campaign. So um, yeah, I guess understanding your keyword data would be another great tip. Yeah, no, really good thoughts, definitely. Um, yeah, some really useful thoughts in the prep for Prime there and just general beyond as well. Very, very helpful. You're so right about impressions, clicks, and conversions. That's what I talk about all the time. Those are the oh, three God, numbers. Yeah. yeah, If you can master impressions, clicks, and conversions, you can succeed on Amazon. So, um, yeah, yeah, really, really good thoughts. If people do want to get a hold of Jungle Scout, you're very modest and say there's other tools, but um, <laughs> you're here to represent Jungle Scout, so let's give it a promo. Um, if people want to get involved with Jungle Scout, what's... Um, um, you know what's the best option for them there's obviously different packages i don't know if you i don't know if you guys have got anything special for prime day or anything like that or what's yeah just what's the best place to send them really yeah we do have a prime day deal so if you're if you're on the edge of getting a tool like general scout then general scout will have a prime day special offer so you can head to our website generalscout.com you can join our mailing list so on that home page you just scroll down a little bit enter your email and then we'll alert you whenever there's a that deal um, it should be available when you're watching this episode now. But um, even if you're not going to get it now, throughout the year, once you join that mailing list, we'll alert you whenever there are, is a deal. But the Prime Day deal is going to be one to get. It's going to be an amazing deal. I don't know the exact number now, but last year was our, our greatest discount that we've done. And this year, it's probably going to be very similar to that. So head over to Jungle Scout, join the mailing list, or just sign up for Jungle Scout. There's a few different packages for you. There's a, a basic, a sweet, and professional. However, there's also a, another package. So you'll see this when you're on the pricing page. You jump over to the packages uh, tab there. And there's a few other options there, including Freedom Builder Bootcamp. So um, Greg Mercer, the founder of Jungle Scout, he is so insightful. He's got this course called the Freedom Builder Bootcamp and includes our 12 months, or I'm sorry, includes 12 months of our professional plan, so our top plan. And it's a heck of a deal, I'll tell you that. And he's got a full module set up for you. It's going to be awesome. Like you'll learn so much, whether it's your first time selling or even if you're trying to launch additional products and you're an experienced seller. So that's what I would do is I'd take advantage of the Jungle Scout deal um, to get our full suite of, of tools. And especially if you can, is to use Greg's knowledge to your advantage. And he's not just going to teach you how to use Jungle Scout tools. He's going to show you the best way of selling on Amazon and the mindset you need to have. So um, that has been my pitch to, to use Jungle Scout and to take advantage of the Jungle Scout deal. <laughs> Or the prime day. Nah, it's good, man. It's good. And it's, you know, highly recommended. We don't, you know, promote stuff that we don't believe in. It's, uh, you know, the first tool I ever used and, um, you know, cool. highly, highly recommended and, uh, you know, very well, widely respected in the in industry. So, yeah, very happy for um, you to promote that. And obviously, we'll leave the links in the description awesome. and the show notes for people to be able to um, to navigate to that from this episode as well. Uh, what about you, Jake? Is there anywhere that people can sort of connect with you and, and what you're up to um, as well? The best way is through YouTube, actually. So we're in the comments all the time. Every video, we answer questions. We talk to, to customers, we talk to viewers. And that's the, probably the best way you can reach us is on YouTube. However, LinkedIn's a great way. Me personally, Jake Zaransian, or Jungle Scout, I'm, I'm in the social account as well, so I can I can read your comments there. Um, Instagram is probably where we're most active from a company. We get okay. you know send out the most updates. So um, yeah. those three platforms, YouTube, Instagram, and LinkedIn are great. Yeah. Yeah, well, you guys are doing an amazing job for, you know, uh, industry education. So, um, you know, keep up the good work. We appreciate all the value that you bring to the community, man. And uh, and thanks for coming on the episode. It's been really insightful, and I'm sure it's going to help a lot of sellers prepare for Prime Day. Well, likewise, Ben. I'm a huge fan of the of the podcast. I've been listening to it for years, so this is like I'm, I'm stoked to be on myself. I appreciate you having me, and um, keep up the great work as well. Thanks, man. Appreciate it awesome folks thanks for listening to this episode uh, i hope you have got as much value out of that as i think you will have so much actionable advice there to take away implement and have the most amazing prime day whether it's 2023 or 2033 by the time you're listening to this hope you have the most amazing next prime day coming up and if we can help with anything else please do reach out and we'll see you in the next episode same time next week take care